Dimitri Williams works with gaming companies and startups. He's also a professor at the University of Southern California teaching courses on technology, society, and games. And I asked him how gaming has evolved over the years. Things have changed pretty radically in the last 30, 40 years of gaming. Uh, when it first started out, it really was a hobbyist function, and it was really just something for boys, young men, very technologically centered. And now it's in all ages, all genders, all groups phenomenon, and it's no longer only on consoles. Now it's on mobile platforms. It's on everyone's phone. It's one of the main pieces of content on everyone's phone. iPads, PCs, and those consoles are still there. And so it's morphed from this very niche activity into a very broad activity that is engaged in by the majority of the people on the planet as opposed to just a tiny fraction when it started. Right. I mean, back in the day, it would be something that you would do after school with a friend at someone's house. Uh, in China, for example, people are now paying others to play with them online. What's the draw in playing other people, strangers even, people who are ranked gamers, uh, people that you don't know? Well, there are a couple things. Um, the first is that we are social creatures. You know, we're pretty social monkeys um, from evolution, and the worst penalty you can have is solitary confinement. So people only want to do things by themselves so much. Being with other people is intrinsically fun. Secondly, video game developers and programmers, when they make a game and if they make it a single-player version, they can only create so much content, and they can only make an artificial intelligence that's so good. But uh, there's something almost infinite about the kind of things that other people might do. And so it's like if you give them the same tools for, say, a soccer or a football or basketball match, um, playing against a, a computer opponent would be one thing, but the who knows what those other people are going to do next, who knows how my teammates are going to perform, is a sort of a randomized content generator that um, so the software industry hasn't been able to replicate. And so people love that variety and diversity and you know, surprise of what other crazy people will do. How big of an industry has this become in recent years? Talk to us about the money behind it. What is driving it? Um, well, the amount of money, uh, estimates vary, but it's somewhere annually between 130 and $180 billion a year market um, globally, and that's hardware and software and services. Some parts of that are really big, some parts of that are really, really small. Um, and how it's evolved largely over the last 10 years is because of the emergence of mobile as a platform. Because what that's done is it's given developers new places to put their games, and it's increased the audience by a factor of 2 or 3x. So people who 10 years ago would never have said, I'm a video game player, and who still probably wouldn't say I'm a video game player, have become so. They don't stereotypically do the video game things we might think about with like shooter games but if you're playing a puzzle game or something on your phone you're a video game player and now we're also hearing about this push to get esports into uh, the Olympic Games there are also professional gamers making big money how lucrative of a career has this become well it can be pretty lucrative for the very very small number of people um, Professional sports are a good parallel in terms of both the business structure as well as the incentives and the audience and the culture and everything. It really does follow along pretty well. A certain number of millions of people can play basketball and only the tiniest fraction become professionals. Even more people can play video games and only the tiniest, tiniest fraction of them become professionals. So for that very, very elite few who are, this may surprise some viewers, really, really talented, um, <laughs> there is a lot of money to be made for them. But it's certainly not the sort of um, let's plan on as a career path. Even, it's even less good advice than it would be to, you know, I, I hope I'm a professional uh, sport player someday.